Welcome to this very special Market Guru. Joining me today is Christopher Wood, live from here at uh, the CLSA India Forum. Thanks very much, uh, Chris, for coming by and agreeing to talk to our viewers here in India. We really look forward to your views, and it's uh, a good uh, situation that we have you here talking to them live. Uh, my first question, you pretty much uh, coined the word Euroquake, and that seems to have become the buzzword today in terms of uh, what really is Europe going through. I want you to explain to our viewers a bit more because ever since you even wrote this report, there have been more developments. Are we closer to a Euroquake or are things getting any better? Well, basically, the reason I use the word Euroquake is because the European zone, Eurozone uh, area, suffers from the financial equivalent of a geological fault line, and that is the system where they have monetary union without fiscal union. So the simplest way to look at this situation is that this, this crisis has been caused by this combination of monetary union without fiscal union. So it won't be resolved until they either go formally to fiscal union or uh -huh. the, the, the whole Eurozone breaks up. Uh -huh. And <coughs> clearly neither has yet happened, so we're not at the end of the crisis. My base case is that the climax will end, the crisis will end with a more full-scale move to fiscal union, which will mean you know, a Europe setting up of a European fiscal authority treasury with the power to raise taxes, issue joint and several euro bonds. But my view to get to, get to that final stage, you will need more of a crisis. The Euro ECB sooner or later will be forced to monetize or so-called print money. The Germans will only allow that to happen, in my view, with a, with a, by insisting on a more concrete, disciplined fiscal regime, i.e. a European Treasury. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how I think the crisis will end, but I don't think we've reached the peak of the crisis. You did mention uh, in your report that uh, the Euroquake might sound alarmist, uh, but given the developments of what we've seen, and you've also mentioned about Germany, that its ability, while it might necessarily have to come in and do exactly what you mentioned, but its ability to do that is not as comfortable as perhaps it was. Uh, so what? Well, yeah, the longer they take to get to the end game, the bigger the risk that the, the healthy part of the Eurozone is contaminated. So basically, the way to look at this is, again, the disease. The, the cause of the disease is monetary union without fiscal union. The disease began in the periphery, but the disease is spreading from the periphery to the core. The longer they take to fix the disease, the bigger the risk it contaminates the rest of the body. So I'm telling investors the key uh, spread to have on their screens mm -hmm. is French bond yields over German bond yields, not the Italians, <laughs> because the German-French partnership is the core of the Eurozone. That French bond spread rose quite alarmingly last week, and the more that spread widens, the bigger, the nearer we are to the end game, and the quicker they need to move to fiscal union. The reason why the French bond spread is also important is because the Germans' preferred approach is an incremental, incremental move to fiscal union via this halfway house called the EFSF. However, the EFSF is fast becoming unviable because the second biggest contributor to the EFSF is France. Mm 